Hi, everyone. It's Ryan Messina. I'm uh, stepping in for Jeff for his usual episodes of uh, Attack of Opportunity because I thought I'd play a little fun joke on him and uh, tell him I hid something special for him in the closet. Little did I know, the secret was no light and a lock. I don't see anything in here. Are you sure it's in here? Keep looking, Jeff. But while Jeff's gone and occupied right now, I thought I'd take this opportunity to uh, abscond away with one of my friends uh, here in the uh, whole Dicewise Entertainment crew uh, and interview uh, my buddy Frank Hamilton. Frank, thanks for uh, giving me some time here, bud, so I can uh, pull your eardrums and get into what makes Frank Frank. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Uh, happy to be here. I, you know, it's been a while since uh, we talked last. <laughs> um, so what's up? Talk to me. Um, well, uh, just kind of want to kind of get into the nitty gritty of like the origins of Frank as a, a gamer, a man who rolls dice for fun and not for money. Um, it's, you know, I know you've been playing for a long time, uh, but um, what was a, what was your first intrigue? Like, how did you get into the uh, whole D20 systems or D&D &D, if that's where your start was? Uh, well, it it's kind of goes way back to like 1980. Um, I lived in a place in Arizona that had literally nothing to do. And I was, uh, you know, just kind of cruising through the garage sales with my mom and found a D and D box set, you know, the basic red box, you know, that's got that Elmore cover art on it. Oh, nice. Came with the, uh, the dice. And is it the one that had the red figurines and the pre-made uh, mod or? I, this one came with you know some dice and i think it had like a crayon or two in it and uh it had some old character sheets you know from the the person that was selling it off and uh yeah i mean ever since it's been kind of the artwork that has kept me kind of interested in gaming because back then there wasn't a whole lot of people around where i was playing so really i was more of just like this kid that was trying to live out these dreams through the artwork that was on the covers and inside the books so it's almost like an original Jumanji story. You picked up a box and you got trapped in another world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think in some of the earlier ones, there was kind of like, you know, how to play D&D. &D. And there was like a page or three of, you know, like examples of role play. And I would just read through those and I'd be like, oh, man, it would be so cool to, to have friends that would do this. And eventually I would start, you know, kind of like, writing my own story content you know oh, and it was it was terrible and you know like a lot of people um growing up that are interested in gaming stuff i'm like you know what i'm gonna get my uh english degree i'm gonna write for a living it's gonna be amazing you know but things happen but uh <laughs> you know that that love for artwork and for playing the game has always been there oh that's cool buddy um so this, this was your introduction into it. And then you talked about, you mentioned that you at the time didn't have a group to play with. So you just started creating your own content and just getting involved in the uh, medium that it was. Um, so when was it that you actually got to start uh, tossing some dice around with some uh, other people? Uh, well, it wasn't until uh, probably last year of like junior high, you know, start to hang out and there's kind of the, the nerdy kids that play D D in the corner, you know, you just, I just walked up to them one day and kind of eavesdropped in and kind of jumped in on their conversation. And then we had a, had a game going the next week. Sweet. So you just forced your way into the circle and said, I'm your friend. Basically. Yeah. I mean, sometimes that's how, how the gamers have to do it. You just like, you're one of me. And then just jump into their conversation. Awesome. Bud. Um, that's cool. So you played from junior high and you've played continually uh, up into your adult years? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, basically, uh, I've, I've had a Saturday game going now consistently with the same group of guys in person for 22 years. Oh, wow. You know, that's and that, that's uh, just since I've moved over to where I'm currently staying in Oregon. Uh, yeah, but we used to play in my garage right around this tiny little kitchen table. My wife would kind of tolerate us. Um, then we migrated into the garage, and that slowly evolved into, like, the the gaming den. Bookshelves get put up. I built a uh, 
a big gaming table that had a kind of a drop down lid on it at one point in time. We'd slide maps under it. Yeah, well, that's cool. Pretty awesome, I thought. Yeah, man. So, um, so you've been playing now for a long time, a couple uh, over two decades at the very least. So, do you have a preferred class or an alignment, or like, uh, where 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 do you get your uh, your jollies most of the playing? Um, you know, as as far as alignments go, I I like playing the good guy. Um, I, I think it's part of that, you know, kind of being respected as the hero in town and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, probably a neutral good or a chaotic good, but everybody likes to dip down into like the true neutrals, the neutral evils, you know, just ever so briefly, but it, it can get kind of old being kind of the bad guy, I, I guess I want to say. I mean, but for the last couple of sessions, my characters have always been kind of abrasive, not necessarily bad guys or, or, or even neutral, but just always kind of had a, an edge to them. And that could be, you know, part of my own personality. As you get older, you kind of, if you're not careful, kind of get an edge to, you know, or just where you're a little less tolerant of other people's BS. And I think that's rubbing off on my characters. They're becoming more grouchy. <laughs> uh, maybe just developing more facets to your character. That's being like the a trope paladin good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Um, but as far oh, as cool. classes and things like that go, um, I've played almost every class. There have some that I kind of shy away from, monk typically, and I don't know why. It's probably because I don't have a strong archetype to kind of bond with. You know, they've always kind of been this cane and kung fu, and that's eh, that. That's okay. There, there's just a lot more stuff on TV and in, in novels that I read that identify with the uh, you know your standard you know, uh, Western European knights or the, the high fantasy elves, and dwarves, things like that. All right. Everyone wants to be Arthur. Nobody wants to be Merlin. Pretty much. Yeah. Especially although, wizard, the original. Although, although wizards are fun to play. I, I, I do like a creepy wizard. <laughs> well, who doesn't from time to time, right? So, so you still have a studio or, uh, your, uh, gamer's den in your closet and your, um, garage that you uh have your saturday gatherings at yeah yeah um it used to be a two-car garage and uh you know i sold my trans am and now we just park in the driveway there um but yeah it's got a uh, a four by eight table that i made out of a, a piece of subfloor when i was still building houses uh pretty sturdy there um i i had so much more plans for it like to put shelves underneath that would slide out like drawers where you could stow your your books and things and they'd kind of tuck them up out of the way but it never quite got that far and now i've just kind of picked up an old mondo mat you know like one of those chess x things yeah and so now it's a four by eight drawn map and then we used it for a while and now we're pretty much stuck on roll 20 just because it's you know it's really visually something to look at you know a, a good map all right. So you guys have a projector or something set up or? So uh, you do most, so you, you've gotten away from uh, playing games on a battle mat and you're more so onto the virtual territory now? Yeah, I, I think I think that's probably an accurate assumption. Um, most recently, um, I'm running a Strange Aeons game, and uh, we've gone from the the small mats and the big mondo mat. Now we're using Roll Twenty. Have just kind of dipped my toe into map making and things like that. Before I would I thought it was uh, more entertaining, you know, to kind of be part of the story, to get up, kind of walk around as you're kind of bringing these characters and these scenes to life. You know, when, as you run the game, but but now you know, just kind of trying not to hide behind my computer screen as I move monster tokens and things like that. I mean, but I think it the roll twenty mapping format brings a lot to a game. It's the uh, versatility and the um, being able to generate something that's uh, color depth of field, and again, like you were saying, uh, I have to agree with you. The art is. Uh, part of what helps draw you into these environments exactly yeah yeah so you mentioned that you got into the the virtual landscape 
Um, so I'm supposing when you got into that, started playing around with Roll20, uh, this was around the time that you met Jeff? Uh, it was a little bit before that, actually, a um, couple of years. A lot of my friends that I gamed with are all kind of techie. Some are electronics people, a lot of programmers in my group. And they had stumbled onto Hero Lab, and we were making characters that way, printing them off and using that way. And then eventually we stumbled onto the Roll20 platform. And then, uh, you know, our games kind of would be a hybrid between Mats and Roll20 and this, that, and the other. And uh, as one of my games kind of slowed down a little bit, I thought it would be interesting to check their Roll20 forum as far as new games go. And I found Jeff's... Uh, advert there for a, a podcast gaming group. I thought it was interesting, so I gave him a shout out. Uh, that was about two years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we started with uh, this kind of desert environment, and then we started it again, <laughs> and then we started it again. <laughs> the legendary Mummy's Mask. Yes, yes. The game that never ends. <laughs> the reason why we love level one so much, am I right? Because we never leave it. <laughs> <laughs> they say home is where the heart is. Exactly. All right. So that's, uh, it's cool, bud. So you started off in Mummy's Mask, but uh, how many shows um, are you currently involved in? Oh, gosh. Um so I started, like you were saying, in Mummy's Mask, and through them, or, or through that one, you know, I met uh, you and Matt and Aiden and all the other guys um, playing Star Wars. So I kind of glommed on kind of late in the Star Wars game as a kind of a grouchy, quiet sniper guy. You know, once again, kind of showing my age there. <laughs> um, um, from there, it was, you know, Taldane Knights in uh, Dice Before Dishonor kind of dipping into the darker side, you know, with one of those side quest podcast things. Um, but I think we've probably got four or five up and running now or in the mix. Nice. Some in production, some in release, and I think some which are slated to come out in the near future. Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, the evil, the evil game kind of dropping. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, so Evil Play Podcast? To, yeah. Yeah, no, I can tell you have a lot of fun with that. And I'm just glad my character is playing with you and that we're hopefully not going to have to entertain the idea of PvP. No, no, PvP is always ugly. I mean, it, it's fun to think about, you know, and I, I think everybody's done it at one point in time. You get irritated at a character and you grease him. And then he <laughs> comes back and makes a character solely to grease you and you get a little bit of that back and forth. You know, yeah. but after a while, it gets fun, and you realize that no matter what alignment of a character you play, it's always better to kind of get along, even if it's a strained get along. It's it's always better to get along with your your companions. And I and I think that's part of what that evil podcast is is going to try to show is that you can play characters that while they may be morally reprehensible, um, they can kind of get along with other people as long as their own goals are uh, advanced. Yeah, no, the, uh, oh, wow. the Hell's Vengeance uh, AP I think is uh, will be a good playground especially for you to show off your chops. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I haven't read much about it. Um, either the, the nation of Cheliax or you know, kind of what the AP is all about. So it's going to be really fun to explore both the country and, and role play as some of these darker characters in that new setting. Well, yeah. for me, anyway. I agree. Uh, I found sometimes that's uh, usually better to kind of go in blind and then exactly. you really have to rely on your uh, DM to actually uh, paint the map scape out for you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so I remember, like, I never actually had this privilege uh, because I started playing the game with Jeff uh, in person but he did a, a bunch of editions and everyone always has a story about their edition. Do you have a story about yours? About my edition? Yeah. Um, let's see here. I, I think, you know, the, the funny thing was uh, there was a rogue that was in this early kind of mummy's mask uh, side trek thing kind of adventuring foray and the rogue was trying to kind of move through the crowd and pick some pockets or something like that and i was playing a kind of a, a, a 
not a charlatan priest, but someone who was not afraid to take take advantage of the crowd. And so started proselytizing and passing the the collection hat around and ended up make making more that way than the rogue did trying to pick pockets. It was it was pretty <laughs> funny. That's awesome. It's always fun when you can have a character who can steal but not steal. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, right. Uh, so in, in that, uh, so where you live, uh, do you ever attend any convent, con, uh, any cons? Well, I don't, I don't know if I want to say fortunately or unfortunately, but uh, the nearest conventions that are really, I think, worth going to are probably up near Portland, Seattle area. That's about four or five hours away. And the ones that I've always, you know, just really wanted to die to go to are, you know, days away. And uh, so, no, I, I've never actually been to a convention, not for gaming anyway. I've, I've been to some Home Builders Association things for a while, you know, with my old job. But uh, no, never any gaming stuff. All right. And you mentioned your uh, previous careers. And I know personally, but for the listening audience, maybe they don't, uh, that you started off as a, a tradesman. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, kind of drug my way through high school did some uh, factory work and then fell into carpentry. And I was a uh, journeyman carpenter for a long time up until 2006, 2007 ish, then went back to school and got a nursing degree. Yeah. That's uh, that's going to be quite the flip and change of environments for you. Yeah. I mean, you credit it all to uh, actually, you know, I credit it to playing D and D, you know, that love of reading that, you know, always wanting to learn more to, to read, to stuff like that, you know, it really does kind of foster an interest in uh, education because you're always trying to learn new rules, things like that. I really, I really think it helped kind of shape who I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure uh, D- the D and D franchise would love to hear your story there. <laughs> Get into D and D, become a nurse. That's right. <laughs> I ah, did it, cool. and so can you. <laughs> True enough. So, uh, do you know of any um, any products that the uh, Dicewise Entertainment might uh, have for merchandising uh, available? If anyone were to want to pick up some swag, so to speak. Um, well, you know, I think we do have some stuff like that. Um, we've got a couple of websites available through the links and things like that, Teespring and stuff like that. Um, just kind of funny sayings. Uh, we've got some miniatures that are out there through uh i believe it's messina's miniatures uh, yeah uh, thanks for the shameless plug that's uh right. three printing yeah. company um some coffee mugs socks t-shirts houses that's right get your own frank built house um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know we, we've got all kinds of stuff available for those that are they're interested in geeking out with us yeah uh, that's cool i see even some of uh, uh phrase, some shirts that have your phrases on it uh, I don't, I don't know how noteworthy any of my phrases are, but there was one that I thought was humorous. Uh, we were playing kind of good cop, bad cop in a Star Wars game, and uh, I, I suggested throwing someone out the airlock. I'd been watching a little bit of The Expanse, and that's kind of a, a fun way that they do with people there when they're tired of talking with them. And so <laughs> we were playing good cop airlock, <laughs> and I, I yeah. think that made it onto a shirt. <laughs> I'd, I'd buy that shirt. Uh, so, so we've talked about where you came from, talked about what you went through, and we've talked about where you are now. Uh, and we've even dabbled a bit with, with the future. We don't know how much uh, Jeff will let us talk about things in the future without spoiling things. Um, so with that there. Well you, well, you know, Jeff's not here. He's still locked in the closet. Um, I'm I'm really seeing some exciting things with the dice before dishonor i'm excited to see that thing um move forward see our the a cavalier group you know just basically hamstringed with skills and things like that see how they get through some of the uh the challenges that thing presents um the evil group you know that uh that string there that's going to be a whole lot of fun both to play in and to listen to uh man from assyrian is going to be coming out here before too long i'm i'm really excited to hear about that so yeah, a lot of stuff in the works, a lot of stuff coming out here here pretty quick. 
yeah i'll come up in the uh, near future if not it's already out for people to consume so anyways, bud um i don't know if jeff's gonna find his way out of that closet time soon there bud but i gotta get back to my wife and i'm sure you got it back gotta get back to yours so um if anything there bud if i'm not talking to you sooner uh, thank you for your time bud and i'll see you at least on friday uh yeah um anyway yeah always a lot of fun talking with you guys and and thanks for having me on anytime bud ciao Hey guys, I think I found it. Yeah, that, guys, guys. Hey, uh, I'm having a little trouble here. Uh, with the door, uh, Zena. Hello.